Well, it looks like April Fool's Day has exposed the fools. The tide has turned in Dalton, Illinois. And in this video, I am going to explain to you why that is the case. Plus, my opinion on why the FBI and the state is taking so long to intervene. Let's break it down and go political. Welcome back to the Go Political channel. This is Carlton Flowers, your host. And today, we are going to cover the monumental developments taking place in the city of Dalton, Illinois, at the regular board meeting, which occurred on April Fool's Day, April the 1st, 2024. Now, if you have been following the drama with the Reign of Terror by Tiffany Henyard, the resident mayor of the city of Dalton, you need to check the links in the description and get caught up because things are coming to a head. So during the time that they were building up to this meeting, we saw police barricading the streets, trying to deny the citizens access to city hall while locking the doors and only allowing seven people in at a time where they had to pass through metal detectors and be padded down. So there was a huge crowd that had amassed. It was a planned protest of what is going on with Mayor Tiffany Henyard and her corrupt city officials that are on her administration. And they, I guess, thought that they could thwart the effectiveness of the protest by disallowing access to a public place that citizens pay taxes for to participate in. Pretty sad. Well, the good news about this meeting is that the Board of Trustees are finally playing 4D chess. Up until now, we have seen the board members, the four trustees who are the honest trustees who have the best interest in mind of the citizens, we've seen them constantly manipulated and gaslighted by Mayor Tiffany Henyard. <laughs> but this is the first board meeting that has occurred where they did not take the bait, kept themselves under control emotionally, and actually made the best move in this game of 4D chess that they have to date since the mayor was elected. Now, as we dig into this, I'm going to be showing you some footage a little bit at a time, and then I'll give you my commentary and try to catch you up to speed and boil this all down. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to share my insight about what's going on. And I'm going to also explain to you why it is taking so long for the state the FBI for the ruling authorities to step in and intervene. A lot of people have said up until this point, make this make sense. And you see a lot of people in these board meetings stating the same. Residents and even members of the board of trustees, make this make sense. Well, in this video, I am going to help you to make sense out of this situation by exposing the roots and then you will see that this is just a microcosm of what we see happening every day in our federal government. All right, so let's jump into this first video. And the first video, I might mention that one thing that we constantly saw throughout this entire meeting were threats by the captain of the police department, uh, Mr. Lacey. <laughs> warning the crowd that he would end the meeting if there was any clapping or any outburst, looking for an excuse to stop the meeting. I didn't think this meeting was even going to finish because I thought he was going to shut it down. But let's check out some of these claims from Captain Lacey about shutting down the meeting due to the credible threats. If there are any outbursts, if there are any clapping, or anything that is, or if we get another credible threat, the meeting will be closed. All right, that's a bunch of complete nonsense in my opinion, but let's take a look at some of the credible threats as the crowd is having a peaceful 
protest outside. And I might mention that during the meeting, when you're watching the video from within the board meeting, you could hear the crowd chanting outside. And it was an amazing display. It was an amazing and effective protest that stayed peaceful through the duration of the evening. Let's look at a news report from NBC5. Ask Dalton residents and many will say the bi-monthly municipal meetings run by Mayor Tiffany Hayard have become a regularly scheduled spectacle. The increasingly irate residents arrive plenty early for the first of the month meeting. Village residents clamored against the double doors, tussling and then navigating a security screening for a highly coveted seat at a public meeting where items like unpaid bills and payroll were supposed to be the topics of discussion. Mayor Tiffany Hanyard took her seat on the dais to preside over the board meeting. Now here's something that I thought was very interesting as I was watching the board meeting. I noticed that when the mayor announced the time for public comments, she stated that the residents had two minutes to voice their concerns. The standard time up until this point has been three minutes. But in an attempt to thwart the citizens, she cut the time from three minutes to two minutes. So clearly their civil rights are being violated and there's no regard for their freedom of speech. But they knew what was going to be coming because there were several residents that blasted Mayor Henyard and brought up all of the allegations that are floating out there that she wants to sweep underneath the rug and even though she had her two or three paid shillers, I like to call them paid shillers, these are people who she probably sent money ahead of time to read a script. And you could tell from the ones that were basically shilling, which I'm not going to show because I don't want to give that any more attention than what it has already been given. But the paid shillers were there to make her look good, but the citizens were coming out with guns blazing bringing up the allegations that are hanging out there in the air to this date. Now, here's another uh, very dubious and interesting uh, thing that occurred during the meeting. The presence of Andrew Holmes, or lack thereof. So, trustee Andrew Holmes was nowhere to be found. Of course, with the very serious allegations that are still hanging out there about what went on during the Las Vegas trip and the individual that actually filed a complaint, was put on medical leave, and then fired after apparently allegedly being sexually assaulted, in addition to four others that have come forward. Uh, one of the residents had something to say about Andrew Holmes missing from the meeting. Let's check that out. Number two, Andrew Holmes in his absence. Maybe he's in the back listening. The nerve of you to sit in the seat as a trustee here with the allegations. The people put you in the seat to serve as a trustee to the residents, not to the mayor. You say you're an activist of law enforcement? Well, I was an officer in the trenches for 25 years. That meant doing the work, not talking the talk, not looking for a camera at every turn. I was locking people up, even took a bullet all in the name of being a public servant for the people. In light of the allegations, I, as a resident of Dalton, former law enforcement officer and female, along with other Dalton residents, would like to see you display some integrity and step down pending the outcome of this investigation. Okay, guys, now this is where it starts to get really ridiculous. I mean, we're talking Twilight Zone here. As this resident mentions the fact that they have been violating their First Amendment rights. And then Lacey comes back with another threat to shut down the meeting. Check this out. You just cannot make this stuff up. All right. All right. Um, next part. One more time. I'm, I'm sorry, Madam Mayor. Oh, go ahead. One more time. I am clearing the room. Okay. Okay. Miss Avant. No, they don't. When it's a safety issue, it falls under the police department. So apparently this police chief uh, doesn't know the definition or meaning behind the First Amendment rights. But it's interesting to hear one of the residents have to step forward 
and call out the city attorney for not making it clear. Let's check out what she has to say. And to our attorney, it is a disgrace that you will not explain to this body what the rules of the First Amendment are. Total violation, so continue to get your check. So before anybody can say, can this thing get any worse? It did get worse. So the resident goes on to call out the mayor for lying, for continuously lying, and says that she would not ever trust a word that comes out of her mouth. And then Chief Lacey, in his infinite wisdom, after the discussions have been made and the comments made regarding First Amendment rights, he shuts the meeting down, only to be corrected by the city attorney who leans over and whispers in his ear and tells him something to the tune of, hey, idiot, if you do this, it's going to cause us major problems. So let's check out this clip as he tries to shut the meeting down and then cleans it up, changes it to only throwing out the resident who was backing up the speaker because they mentioned the person who was killed by the police two years ago. Check it out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, the meeting is now closed down. We need you guys to move through the door. Okay. Yeah, okay, uh, just a hey, lieutenant, lieutenant, just the one that's making the ruckus, just the one that's making the ruckus, escort him out. Now we get to the Peace de Resistance. This is where the tide officially turns in favor of Jason House and the other three honest trustees who up until now have not been able to fully take control of the situation. Now, I will tell you this, that it was a major win in court when they were given access to the bank account records as um, commanded by a judge. So that was a major move in taking control of the situation as the mayor runs the city budget into an incredible deficit of about $8 million. But here in the end of the meeting, what you're about to see is the turning point of this entire situation. And there's a, th a few things that I want you to notice in this video clip. This is going to be a four minute clip. You can fast forward through it if you want, but I want you to see it in its entirety to take note of these specific things. First of all, you'll notice that Jason House calmly, calmly brings up his point about the fact that the residents have a right to be in a larger place that would be safer and calls for a vote to postpone the meeting and shut it down. So he moves to shut the meeting down after several threats and failed attempts by Chief Lacey. It's amazing how it played out this way. Now, the other thing I want you to take note of is none of the other trustees had any emotional responses. And Clerk Key calmly calls for the role. While Tiffany Henyard continues to babble on, overtalk her, and yammer about nothing, not addressing any of the horrendous allegations or the comments made by the citizens, but she continues to yammer on. They take the vote. They take charge of the situation. They get up and they walk out. Let's check out the video. All right. Um, thank you for your public comment. Next on the agenda is general announcements. Do anybody have any general announcements? Um, yes, ma'am. All right. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I hear a lot of the outrage and I think a lot of it is just around um, having a space that can accommodate and I'm concerned also that there may be some violations of Open Meetings Act because we need to have a space when we know that there's uh, this many people. Um, as such, I'm going to make a motion that we postpone this meeting and continue the agenda to Monday, April 8th, a week from today at 6.30, Dalton Park District 14700 Evers. So that is my motion. Um, trustee? Second. We are not postponing a meeting. We are Did you here. get my second clerk? And basically, we have two items on the agenda. So we can basically continue with our meeting and get through the two items that's on the meeting. 
So my advice to the board is we are already here. Let's handle the business and not let the business handle you guys. We're not having no meeting at no okay. Dalton Park District. So I'm just, just making that crystal ground. clear. Tr Clerk, what are you doing? You out of order. You out of order. Did I call the roll? Did I say call the roll? I'm still speaking. You're out of order, Clerk Key. You out of order, Clerk Key. Like, stop. Y'all out of order. Everybody want to run stuff. Y'all don't run this house over here. Stop, please. So, as I was stating, we need to continue with the business. We are here. People came to a meeting to hear we have been doing in our village. The department heads, the lawyer, everyone's I call here. The vote. So I'm asking for you guys to Hi. sit Tammy here Brown. and to deal with what's going on. Trustee Tammy and Brown. And that's the problem that we have. Now, wonder Trustee why we House. have this function. This is the reason. So Trustee if y'all walk out, y'all walk out. We got business to have. Okay. All right, so go ahead, part. go ahead, handle your business, and we gonna handle ours. Well, the meeting was adjourned because we have to have enough space. So we have to. Uh, the Open Meetings Act requires that the uh, that we have enough space for everybody to get in. Uh, because of that, I feel we have a lot of outrage going on out there, and we want to be able to provide the space to people that they are looking for. Uh, Monday, May 8th. Monday, May 8th. Monday. I'm sorry. Monday, April 8th, 6:30 p.m. Dalton Park District. Yes. Um, well, we're trying to listen to the outcries of residents, and I think it's very disappointing. Yes. Everyone's frustrated at the moment. You're violating the ordinances. You're violating the residents' rights. They deserve this is their house. This is the residents' home. And any time you can't come in, it's a problem. Wow. So the trustees just get up and leave after they call for the vote and they end the meeting. And then what does Tiffany Henyard do? The same deflecting, gaslighting, and lying. Same thing that she does in every single meeting. Just continues on babbling as everyone just lingers in the back of the room. The trustees are back there chatting and getting interviewed by the local media. And she's up there babbling away. Not even not even spending any time to respond to anything that they brought up or anything that the citizens had mentioned, but she's just jabbered on telling lies, deflecting, and, and, and just changing the attention, taking it off of all the negative and putting it on her fantasy world. So as everyone starts to walk out, then we notice that Chief Lacey says, that's it, clear the room, clear the room. Everybody in the back, you guys have got to leave now but they were already leaving. I thought that was pretty funny. So why is this a major turning point? Why is this the pivot? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because the trustees finally know what they're dealing with, and that is a sociopath. <laughs> now, how do we know that this is a sociopathic leader? Well, look at all the evidence. Look at the way that she can completely ignore all of the seriously awful, heinous allegations, things that the citizens bring up to her face, and she does not blink an eye. Let's go back and take another video clip here and look at one of the women that you just saw. And this is actually Kara Wilson, whose daughter was shot and killed by the police. She spoke earlier. Let's listen to what she's saying here and take note that Tiffany Henyard does not react. She's not going to blink. All right, cut to the clip. 
I'm Cara Wilson. I'm the mother of Alexis Wilson, killed by Dalton, Illinois police. On the time, at the time that my daughter was killed, Tiffany stood in front of a microphone much like this and said that she stood with the cops and they did do the right thing by killing my 19-year-old child. Not only did she not take those words back, she didn't offer her condolences. She's never said anything. The first thing she did was hire this group of security guards to surround her and PR. So the real reason Tiffany has security is hiding from accountability about what she said about Alexis Wilson when she was killed. Now, if you watch the coverage of this murder, these officers violated her rights, reached in her car, jumped in her car, and put seven bullets in my child, two in her head and five down her side. And the next day, you guys tried to spin it like she did something. Watch the video. She did nothing to deserve this. And again, last time they brought up Alexis, she's doing what she does now. Look this way, look that way, every way, but at the person talking. You don't give a damn, and you never did, and you never acted like it. She called out a whole press conference to call my daughter a criminal, a, a Homewood Flossmore graduate with no criminal record. But Tiffany, you have one, because we used your mugshot to, to protest in front of your house, and that's why you hid. That's why you have security. So let's tell the truth, which I know you're incapable of. I wouldn't trust this woman, as she stood on a stack of Bibles and had her tongue notarized. Not a damn thing she says comes out her mouth is true. Thank you. Say amen. Alexis. All right. Okay. All right. Okay, well, let's bring this all home and wrap it up. In the beginning of the video, I told you that I was going to give the reasons why this is dragging on so long and what my prediction is. My prediction is that she's not going to make it to the election and she's going to get taken down but it's dragging on and it could be a matter of weeks or even months or maybe even take a year so the question is why are the authorities not taking her down right now why do they have to watch millions of dollars being wasted while she goes bananas instead of putting this woman in jail and saving Dalton. Well, they're not going to save Dalton. Dalton is going to have to save themselves. And I'll tell you why. There are reasons for the delays. So first of all, let's talk about who are the authorities that could step in. Well, number one, you've got the Illinois Attorney General. Okay, they investigate allegations of corruption, misuse of funds, civil rights violations. You have the Illinois State Police. They're responsible for law enforcement, but they can also investigate criminal, criminal matters related to public officials. You got the prosecuting attorney. The state's prosecuting attorney can bring charges against individuals who violate the law. Okay, federal authorities, you got FBI. We already know that they have started to investigate. You got Illinois Department of Human Rights that looks into, say, the sexual abuse allegations that we know that went on during the trip. But why is it taking so long? Well, now, there's a few simple reasons, then there's one major reason. Simple reasons is because investigations are complex, very complex. When you're investigating corruption, financial mismanagement, civil rights violations, it takes time because they got to gather evidence. They have to interview people and make sure that they've got it right because they're intervening in a locality where they aren't. They don't reside there. So they got to get the facts and find out what's going on. Then you got resource constraints. They have to divvy up the money that they spend across the board for all the cases that they're examining. They can't dump all of their money and human resources just into what's going on in Dalton. It's like, hey, take a ticket, sit down, wait in line. Okay? Um, you got legal challenges, uh, the legal battles, like whenever they did the recall vote and they messed up and did not abide by the proper procedures and it got turned over by the idiots, I mean by the uh, Illinois Supreme Court, I believe it was the Illinois Supreme Court. Um, then you have bureaucracies. Anytime that you're dealing with a bureaucracy, you're talking time, Okay. Navigating through all the legal, legal processes, the proceedings, the administrative hurdles will slow everything down. And it takes a lot of public pressure and outcry to get these agencies to move. But what's the biggest problem? Well, the biggest problem is 
you voted her into power. <laughs> Biggest mistake they made, not vetting this person before electing them as mayor. Now, one thing Tiffany Henry says that is true is, I'm a black woman in power, in power. <laughs> well, she is in power. And when you elect a mayor, you're handing them your life. You're handing them the reins where they can do great things and serve the community or they can become an evil, evil regime and rule like a dictator. <laughs> and so this is the risk that you take for not vetting individuals when you think, well, she's young and black, so she's got to be good and ignoring the fact that she speaks like a hood rat and has a prior record. Well, you vote a hood rat with a record into office. This is what you get. And then you can stand in line and wait for someone to come in and save your butts and get you out of this situation. But in the meantime, you can use strategies like what we saw in this meeting that occurred on April Fool's Day to take charge of the situation. So Ronald Reagan once made a statement that my parents didn't like because they were blue blood Democrats. He said, you got to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Well, guess what? You're going to have to do that right here and right now because nobody else is going to pull you out. One of the biggest reasons is you're in the wrong political party. Yeah, you're all Democrats in Dalton. What party is the city of Chicago run by? Democrats. What party rules the state of Illinois? That's right, Democrats. What party is the individual that the hood rat went to see in Washington, D.C.? Democrats. Democrats do not like to come up against Democrats. And that's why A.G. Fox is not going to prosecute or be so quick to step in and prosecute a fellow black woman. Because on top of that, she's a Democrat. So the politics is going to drag this down. As far as the intervention, it's going to drag it down to snail pace. So you're going to have to pull up yourself by the bootstraps and get out of the situation. So anyway, it's a lesson learned. And this is a microcosm of what we see going on on a national scale. It's just at a local scale. So I'm going to sit back and watch this and continue to report on it. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. Who do you think the blame goes to for this woman running this city to the brink of bankruptcy? What do you think they should do? What's their next move? What's the best pathway to take it away power after they have won this first case, court case, to get uh, control of the bank account? I'd love to hear it. Post it in the comments, and uh, that's about all I've got for this one. This is Carlton, and I am out.